Hey, what's up, guys? This is JT. I am the Ty, and I'm going to be bringing you a narrated Wi-Fi battle I had with my friend a while back. I believe this is a UU match, if I recall correctly. I just realized that it was on my computer, and I hadn't narrated it, so I figured, well, I might as well just do that, because I haven't given you guys a narrated Wi-Fi battle in a long time. For any of the people who are really familiar with Pokemon, the Pokemon I am going to showcase in this video is um, very, very common, but for those of you who just watch my Let's Plays, you might think otherwise. Anyway, he's going to lead off with a Miltank. I lead off with a Blaziken. I went for the superpower right there. If you max HP and max defense, he could take a superpower and then retaliate with the Thunder Wave, so that would have been a really, really good play for him. Um, he switched to Blastoise, who takes it like a champion anyway, and I'm going to make a switch out, fearing, you know, a water attack. I go into my Venusaur, and then um, he's going to go ahead and make a switch out. He goes into Glaceon, but I went for the Sleep Powder on the switch, um, just a safe move rather than go for the Grass move. I put the Glaceon to sleep, so I'm thinking I'm really, really lucky. But all of a sudden he goes for sleep talk and then and he pulls an ice beam because basically what you do when you do sleep talk is that you you randomly pick one of the other three moves that you have so that really really sucks that's a max hp max special defense venusaur that just took a boatload of damage from an ice beam so i just went for the leech seed what i wasn't expecting him to hit me with an ice type attack so i'm gonna make a switch into blaziken to resist the ice type attack should it happen again and i'm gonna get some leech seed recovery and then um apparently he choice scarf because he goes for it again and it fails so basically um a Choice Scarf Sleep Talk is a one-trick pony, you can only use it one time, and I don't know if he realized that, so I think he foddered it out in Rage. You could probably save that Glaceon if it's Scarf, I think that'd be really, really useful. But anyway, he's gonna go back into Miltank. Obviously, I'm Choice Scarf, so I'm locked into a move because I outsped him. But uh, I'm just gonna go into Miss Megius and then predict him to go for Stealth Rock. I taunted him so he couldn't Thunder Wave me, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set up the turn to go for a Nasty Plot, knowing that... If that, if that Miltank wasn't running the Scrappy ability, he's as good as screwed because basically he runs the Thick Fat ability and the Scrappy ability because the Scrappy ability allows you to hit Ghost. He could not hit me, which is really, really nice. I nasty plotted and then I just finished off the Ambipom. No, actually, I don't know why he's switching the Ambipom. He, uh, he must have forgot that he couldn't hit me with the Fake Out, but he protects stalls me with Blastoise. I'm going to hit him with a Shadow Ball thinking that that's probably going to kill, but it doesn't kill, which is really, really crazy. And he's just going to go for the Toxic. He's a fast of like 2 HP. It's, it's insane. You can't even see the HP on that. But, um... I'm going to get some Leftover Recovery, and this is basically what Blastoise does best. He protects stalls people, so, um, that's... So that's kind of what Blastoise does on the other side, and then, you know, I'm losing... I'm losing health just little by little, but obviously if you guys know how toxic works, it's kind of additive. Basically, you start losing a little bit of HP, and then it grows into a whole crap ton of HP by the end of the match if you stay in. And then obviously, since I set up with Mismegius, and I don't think he has a good counter, I just want to stay in. So, I know that the Shadow Ball is going to kill out the Blastoise finally. But, you know, the, the combination of... I have, I have the leftovers, but I'm getting hurt really badly by Toxic now. You can go back in the mill tank as a full HP, and I'm thinking... Well, I mean... I'm at plus two, and I have Hidden Power Fighting, so that's super effective on the mill tank. I'm thinking that should probably take it out, but of course he survives with two HP also, and uh, apparently he thinks he can double status me. He goes for a Thunder Wave, which is really, really funny, but honestly, if he couldn't hit me with any kind of move anyway, then that's really, really sucky. Um, I think he was hoping that the Ms. Megius would have died by this point, but it obviously does not. Because if you guys can watch right here, I'm going to survive with, like, the slimmest of HP. Yeah, I survived with 6 HP. He goes into Charizard. I'm pretty sure Charizard can take a Shadow Ball or a Hidden Power Fighting. So, I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball. I think that he told me that that's, that's a Dragon Dancing Charizard. So, he probably should have gone for the Dragon Dance here. That way, he could probably outspeed my Choice Star Blaziken. And then fire back with an Earthquake. Because he's probably running Flare Bliss and Earthquake on it. But, um, at this point, he's going to go into Blaziken now. I'm going to go into Blaziken now, and then because I'm Choice Scarf, I still outspeed him because he didn't go for that Dragon Dance. I'm going to hit him with the Stone Edge, and that's 2x effective. Normally it's 4x effective, but he was roosting, and he, his last stand is a Grumpig, which is really, really awesome. This Grump, um, a substitute Combining Grumpig actually ran all over my team back in 3rd gen when I used to do the Battle Tower, so... Uh, I hate Grump Pigs with a passion, but they're really, really awesome pokes, and yeah, that's what he's doing right now. He's trying to set up. Obviously, since I'm locked in the Stone Edge, I'm just kind of hoping he's going to kill me. I don't really feel like, like switching into anything else and then allowing him to get a free hit on anything. I'm going to go ahead and keep on going for the Stone Edge. I keep on missing, because Stone Edge only has 80% accuracy, so that kind of sucks. And then he finally um, is merciful, and then he <laughs> finishes me off with a Psychic. 
and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch into my Clefable. Um, this is a different Clefable than the Clefable that I normally use. Um, I believe this is a wall-breaking Clefable, but it was set up a little bit differently. I kind of changed him. I've been tweaking him for a while. I don't think he hits for enough power, but I go for the Facade, I break the Substitute, and then I'm gonna go ahead and activate my Toxic Orb, which should make Facade go from base power 70 to base power 140, and then he's just gonna go ahead and go for the Psychic, but, um, Clefables are really, really bulky. They're just naturally bulky. Really, really awesome. I'm gonna go for the Facade again. It doesn't take him out, so that really, really sucks. And then he's gonna go ahead and finish me off with a Psychic. But this is his last Pokemon. He's a really, really low health. I still got a whole slew of different Pokemon to use. I'm gonna go into Steelix, knowing that if he has the Psychic or he has a Signal Beam, it's not gonna be very effective against Steelix. And that's pretty much a good game. I'm gonna go ahead and finish him off with a Gyro Ball. And that is the game, set, and match. So that was really, really fun. Um, I just wanted to showcase that Miss Megius, obviously. And then I always like um, Toy Scarf Blaziken. Toy Scarf Blaziken is pretty much win. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. And um, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. And um, obviously, um, leave a like for the video if you enjoyed it. And you know, leave some comments. And I'll talk to you guys another time. Bye.